Hey guys, what's up? It's Webs here from Slide Nerd. In this video, as you guessed, I'm going to talk about Vector Drawable. Hey, but wait, wasn't I talking about Rotten Tomatoes in my previous video? I showed you the movie search API, the JSON endpoint for upcoming movies, the top movies, the actors, the cast, the reviews, a lot of things. Why am I jumping here suddenly? Let's find out. Here's a little secret that you don't know about me. On one hand, I want to put three different tabs in our app. One for containing the movie search results, the other showing the upcoming movies, and the third one showing the most popular ones. And then if you click on one of the items, what I plan to do is pop up an activity on a fragment that's going to display info like the actors, the cast, the reviews, the movie synopsis, and blah, blah, blah. But on the other hand, being the perfectionist guy, I want icons on those tabs at all costs. But I'm also a very lazy guy. Three tabs is three icons just for one size. And if you remember, there are four of them, MDPI, HDPI, blah, 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 that's 12 icons. I'm not going to search Google or use Illustrator for doing this because I'm lazy. And that's where the vector drawable comes into the picture. So in this video, let me show you how we can make vector drawable for Lollipop. And in the next video, I'll think about putting it backwards as well. Just to give you a head start, there are two types of images. One is the raster and other is the vector one. The photographs that you usually have are raster images. Now at 100% of the normal size, they both look the same. But when you enlarge the image, the raster image is going to look pixelated, but the vector image is going to stay the same. And do you know the reason why? Because you see, when you talk about vector images, they are basically geometric equations that are going to work the same way, no matter how much you enlarge the image. But when you talk about raster images, what you're going to do is enlarge the pixel out there and that pixel is definitely going to show up more prominently when the image is enlarged making the image look blurry. So now that you understand the simple difference, let's take a look at how we can add vectors in Android and what is the advantage behind it. So the first place where I would like to give you a head start is obviously Google. Just go there, type SVG and you will see this nice link from W3 schools where they talk about SVG tutorial. Now I'm not going to dig into depth here because this is an Android video, not an SVG one. But just to give you a rough example, if you go down all the way to SVG path over here, this is exactly what we are looking for. There are certain commands like move to, line to. Let me give you a simple example of how this SVG thing works. So here, take a look at this path specification where they have said try it yourself. They have used the SVG tag here to specify a height and a width. And the most important part is right here where they have said D equals to M150 0. In other words, this simply means move to the point 150 and 0. If we can make this say 100 and 0, you will notice the difference on what happens. Take a look at that. Now we are at 100 on the x-axis, 0 on the y. You go there from line, you make a line to 75, 200 from there. So it's pretty obvious that 75 from the x-axis is over here and 200 from the y is over here. And further, they have said move, make another line to 225, 200, which is why they have used this L command over here, which simply means draw a line to the point that follows it. So 225 and 200 is over here. And then they have said Z here to indicate that you should close the shape that has been created so far. And it goes right to the beginning and closes the shape, making your complete triangle. Now, again, I leave this up to you for full exploration, because as you go down, you'll notice Bezier curves and other things coming up over here. And I'm not going to dig into that right now. Maybe I'll consider making a separate SVG course when we talk about this. So let's get back to Android and figure out how we can use this path definitions in our code. There are two ways to use a vector image in Android at the time of making this video. One is with the vector drawable. Notice what it says here. Added in API level 21. It means it's not available before Lollipop. On the other hand, you can use a library called Mr. Vector on GitHub. Now this simply means that vector drawable compat a7 plus back code of vector drawable. This is available for API 7 plus. You can simply inflate it and include this library in your code and you can have vector drawables anywhere on any version that you want. And we will talk about this library in the next video. But in this video, I want to talk about how we can use the vector drawable to get you up and running with the basics. To take a look at the API here, it says lets you create a drawable based on XML vector graphic with this vector element where you can specify a name for it, a width and a height. And I didn't really work out with these two attributes, viewport, width and height, but I did notice one thing. Either they completely show up or they don't. So I would like to know from you in the comments what do you think these values actually do. So other than that, there is tint here where you can change the color of your drawable and then there's the alpha which you can control here. 
Other than that, before we talk about the group tag, I would like to talk about the path tag here. The attributes here are pretty self-explanatory. It says paths to be drawn. In other words, it's a simple shape that you want to draw like a right triangle or a rectangle or hexagon or whatever. And if you go to the top, group is nothing but a group of paths or subgroups where you can combine together to create a more complex shape like your true real vector image. Now if you go down and take a look at the sample code, this is what you see for a vector drawable where they have given a height, a width, a viewport width height, a group here they have specified say, calling it as a rotation group. Now the reason why they have named this is so that you can animate it if you want to animate the entire group. And we will take a look at this when we talk about animated vector drawable in the upcoming video. But if you take a look at the pivot x and pivot y, they have specified where the pivot of this entire drawable lies and they have specified a rotation of 45 degrees as well. And now this is the actual part where your shape is drawn on the screen with the part data here. You're like, wait, whoa, do I have to write all this? So I told you at the beginning of this video, I'm a lazy person. Hence, I'm going to show you a shortcut of how we can do all this without typing code. So in our material design app, I have created an activity called vector test activity. It does nothing great currently. If you go to its layout, there is simply an image view where I plan to display the vector drawable. The way I do that is similar to what we have been doing all this time. Simply add the background attribute and specify the vector drawable. Now for pre-lollipop devices, we want to make sure that we have a simple image from one of the four drawable folders that is displayed here as well in the background. We will set that up, but before we do that, let's download our vector image. Simply go to images.google.com, type Android SVG, and you'll get lots of images. I have downloaded one of these images, and it's in fact right here in my folder where I have stored the project. You can simply view that inside your Safari browser, and you can take a look at how it looks. So this is what we currently have. The first thing that we need to do is convert this into the vector drawable XML file that we need. And as I told you, I'm too lazy to sit and type all that. I'm going to simply add this file inside this tool here called Android SVG to Vector Drawable Converter. And here you simply drop the file in our case, which is going to be Android.svg, click open, and it's going to generate the complete vector drawable file for you right here. We can just download that file inside our app source main res drawable v21 because this is where we are going to have our vector drawable. We can call it vector underscore Android dot XML file. So you simply click save and the file is saved over here. If you go back to the workspace, you will notice that file has come here inside our drawable v21. There it is, vector underscore android dot xml. Now for the pre-lollipop devices, again, we'll have to construct some vector underscore drawable here. I'm just gonna simply going to call it vector underscore android and make it a selector as the root element. Click OK. Add this file to get yes. Here I'll simply add an item here. Close that item and select the drawable here as at the rate drawable slash IC launcher. So on my pre lollipop devices, it's going to simply display a selector which will only show the launcher all the time. And in our lollipop devices, if you take a look at our vector underscore android.xml from v21 folder, it's right here. This is what you have with the path data and the group and everything constructed the same way we wanted. Now we can go to our activity vector test.xml and we can add our background here by simply saying Android background drawable vector underscore Android. Now let's take a look at if this works or not. Simply run it on both lollipop and pre lollipop devices and we can see this in action. So there's my main activity on pre lollipop. I can simply go here, say vector test activity and I can go to the same thing with my vector test activity in lollipop as well. Notice the difference, bam! This is a simple drawable on pre lollipop and this is our vector drawable on lollipop devices. No matter what size you set for it, it's gonna still look pretty damn good. Let's test something. I specified the height and the width as 144 dp. Does that change something? Let's go and take a look at our pre lollipop and lollipop devices. The vector drawable still looks damn awesome compared to what you see here on the pre lollipop devices out here. Now if you go back, we can remove these borders from our vector drawable by simply going to the vector draw underscore android dot xml for the lollipop files. And this first path is basically the border where you can see the fill color is 0, 0, 0. We can remove the borders out here and the image will look even better. Simply run it again. And there's our pre lollipop and lollipop device. That's pretty damn awesome compared to what we could do so far. Now I have modified the vector underscore android dot xml for our lollipop devices by specifying a tint color. Does that change anything? Let's take a look at that. You go to the pre lollipop and 
the other one take a look at this this is colored now we can specify whatever color we want and this icon can change accordingly isn't that amazing compared to all the illustrator coloring work that we used to do all these days so at this point you definitely have a question hey can we use these vector icons with tabs in our apps why not give it a try simply go to our activity with sliding tab layout now here we need to go to the pager i have specified my pager adapter here where I had specified the icons here you simply put vector underscore Android three times in my case and now when you run this on both pre lollipop and lollipop devices BAM this is what you see the vector icons are working perfectly on your lollipop devices whereas your pre lollipop devices still look ugly with those normal drawable icons now this means that vector drawables are great right let's take a look at that take a look at our stats here with using a vector drawable and without one the normal drawable there were four folders there were four different icons they had these sizes the vector drawable had a single icon with 2265 bytes so the total amount of space we consumed using a vector drawable was, was this whereas the normal one took it to 48405 bytes the amount of space that we saved was 95.3 percent with a vector drawable but does this mean that vector drawables are always great no let's take a look at to ensure that you guys don't get too excited and start using vector drawables everywhere, I also brought up a drawback of vector drawables. Take a look at this icon called robot.svg. If you simply open it in your Safari, you will notice that it's a pretty small icon. But the size of this icon is 96 KB. But if you go to the app and if you go to the source main RES and if you go to the different drawable folders, I have the same icon here rendered as a raster image. And if you take a look at the size here, it's hardly 1421 bytes. So in this case, the comparison goes totally reversed. There's a vector drawable of 97,304 bytes and there are four icons of raster which total to only 3592 bytes in other words we are taking 2600 percent more space using a vector drawable with this icon you're like oh my god what should i do now the thing is you have to make sure that you understand when you use a vector drawable and when you don't simple shapes are always easier to use with a vector drawable you'll save yourself a lot of trouble but if you take a look at this robot here i bet it's a complex shape which is why the vector drawable took quite some amount of space making this up inside a vector drawable xml file so use vector drawables with care if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice